Previously on Alan Wake, I'm hunted by the law. Sheriff, Wake's running. I'm giving chase. Are you seriously telling me that writer just took out my deputies? A thriller I supposedly wrote is coming true. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. <sighs> it's turning into a horror story. I was told that Alice had been kidnapped, but that was a lie. We don't have his wife. We don't know where she is. Her purported <sighs> kidnapper was eaten up by the dark presence before it attacked me. The Truth, Episode 4. Alan, shh, baby. It was just a nightmare. Alice. There you go, Alan. Hartman, I fell. I had to give you a sedative. Don't fight it. I... You went through another rough period. What? Right now, it's very important that you stay calm. We don't want you to have another episode. You're a patient at my clinic. Have been for a while now. The shock of your wife's death triggered a mental illness. No, you're... you lie. You're suffering from various symptoms of undifferentiated schizophrenia. Bastard. It's okay, okay Alan. Alan. Just, Just let, let go. go. go, go, go. I felt groggy. Whatever Hartman had bumped in me was making me numb. I felt like this was happening to someone else. Someone I was watching on television. I couldn't think. Couldn't focus. There were only empty sheets of paper here. No manuscript pages. Damn, where's my stuff at? <clears throat> Are we feeling better now? Feeling calm? Yeah. I see you brought your pet gorilla with you. So sure, I'm calm. I get the message. Loud and clear. Quite right. That's the spirit. Oh. You're being very brave, Alan. I understand you're confused. I would be more concerned if you weren't suspicious of me. I don't blame you for it. Big of you. Now, why don't you come with me? We'll reacquaint you with my clinic and go over everything you might have forgotten. Little walk and some fresh air? Yes, it will do you good. This corridor is for patients. Most of them aren't here right now. Jack took them out for a fishing trip, except for the ones who are particularly vulnerable, of course. I encourage creativity as a part of the recovery process here at Cauldron Lake Lodge. I specialize in treating artists. I bet you do. Splendid, Alan. I honestly believe we can get this thing under control if we work together. This way, Alan. This is like a big yikes, bro. Damn it. Oh. Night Springs. TV for your boy? Where the hell even am I? Uh. <laughs> oh boy. Why can't we just go into other rooms like? <laughs> just push that chair out the way. Get a bow. Hmm. Oh. So just follow him now. Shoot, he locked us in, brother. They're in the big blue house team. Okay, let's just uh, see what this uh, boy has to say, this guy. Now, Alan, from past experience with you, I know I need to get right into the heart of the matter as quickly as I can after an episode. So I'm just going to say this. Alice is dead. No. You're in a very vulnerable state until you understand and accept this. Alice drowned, and you couldn't face that. You're suffering from hallucinations, paranoid delusions, unusual thinking, an obsession about light and darkness, 
a feeling that everything revolves around you, your thoughts and dreams. Your mind has constructed an elaborate fantasy scenario in which your writings are affecting reality. She has been kidnapped and supernatural forces of darkness are trying to stop you. We go this way, Alan. I wasn't ready for another shot, so I went along with it. He had to be lying, but under the influence of the drug he had given me, I had to fight not to believe his words. It's all in your head. You've been making it up. Apart from the tragic accident with your wife, no one has been killed. Your delusions are just a manifestation of your subconscious mind trying to protect you from the too painful truth. Unless we fight the fantasy, it will return. I know the instinct is to resist me, but think about it. Doesn't this make far more sense than the insane supernatural conspiracy you have concocted in your mind? You're a skeptic by nature, Alan. We both know this. Everything can be explained logically. We're in that house that we saw back in the, when we were at the, down there, when there was an island where we were staying. There's somebody sitting there. Somebody over there. Is he like hiding? Look at him. It's like somebody hiding behind a couch. <laughs> saw him? At what? <laughs> right there. Yeah, weird. And there's another guy just standing over there. <clears throat> Alright, Dr. Hotman. Where is she? Is that a sundial? I never get tired of this view. Very inspiring, isn't it? Cauldron Lake spread below us. I could see Mira Peak on the other side of the lake. I thought I could make out the spot where Diver's Isle had been when I arrived with Alice. Now there was nothing but waves. It seems there's a storm coming. Funny, I don't recall there being a mention of that in the weather forecast. Well, no matter. This way, follow me. Alan, what I'm telling you is good news. Right now, we're in control. Every time you have a relapse, it gets more and more difficult to resurface from the dark depths of your imagination. Not surprising, considering your profession. Imagination is what you work with. After all your nightmares, this should come as an immense relief to you. If it doesn't, why is that? Because I'm lying? or because you don't want to admit that you're not well. It's very natural for you to think of me as your enemy. It's part of the illness. I let him talk. All, Hartman I'm obviously loved his own voice. His words echoed madly inside my head. But I, I dug my do nails into the palms myself. of my hands to stay focused. You need to work with me. Once you accept that, we can begin the journey towards your recovery. Come along. Let's go inside. Here's the entrance to the office wing. That's for staff only. You were impressed by my trophies when you first arrived here. I do love to hunt. The great outdoors, man versus nature. It's wonderful stuff. Pretty damn wonderful, yeah. Scary, scary, scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, what the fuck is happening? I'm a real bad dream, mister. You should be afraid of me. Don't want to run into me in the night, that's for sure. Please, Emerson. Mr. Wake is confused enough as it is. Yeah, you'd like me to go away so you won't be scared. But you can't just decide what kind of dream you have or when you have it. 
Emerson. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Boo. That's Emerson. We're actually making some progress with him, I'm happy to say. He works on video games. It's trash, of course, but it does involve some small creative effort, which makes him receptive to my therapeutic methods. No kidding. Hello, I've painted you. Okay. I was just struck by inspiration a couple of days ago. Dr. Hartman wanted me to paint landscapes. That's kind of creepy. And that's what I was doing. But now I've been doing these things, a lot of them. The images just keep coming. Dr. Hartman likes them. He has them in his office. Yeah. He's very proud of Oh, it's those two old guys. I'm getting much better. I think I'm getting better. Huh. Well, I guess I'd better start wrapping this up. The storm is almost here. Look at that. I'd hate to be out there tonight. Oh, we're gonna be out there tonight. Yeah, it's those two old guys from the beginning. Huh. Wonder how they ended up in here. No, and I believe there it is. There it is, team. There's your QR code. It's the last one of the game, apparently. That's what I was looking for. A beginning. A primordial forest. The colors of the fall. The mist. A caldera lake. Silence echoes. Loud. It's too late to hear the words. The man. Naked, crawls to the shore, like a birth? To say that would be a lie, nothing like a birth. The opposite, he staggers to his feet. A carcass of a deer lies on the shore, rotting amidst driftwood. The man is afraid, beside himself. Who is he? He doesn't himself know. Dark waves have washed it away. A blank page where this horror story will be written. He remembers darkness. Feels the shadow pressing down on him. Coming after him. He must get away. He runs to the forest. To a fate worse than death. Alright, let's head uh, back down because I think that was all I was looking for. And this place is just dark as hell. Oh, there's a thing here. It's a good thing we explore sometimes, team. What do these uh, canisters do? Have s no idea. I don't think there's... Oh. I wonder if I can turn this on right now. Hartman had mentioned that the power had been acting up. Maybe that was the reason for the generator and the work light on the balcony. The generator hadn't been activated, and there was no key. Ba -ba -ba. All right, let's uh, go talk. Oh, there's another one right here. These thermos, thermoses, <laughs> thermos eye. Ah. All right, let's go in here now. Let's talk to this fool. You might have noticed the typewriter in your room. You've been writing as a part of the therapy. As soon as you feel up to it, you should continue. Cauldron Lodge. Amber, let me escape. My rheumatism is killing me. There's a storm coming. Oh, what a storm. I hope it wipes this place off the face of the earth. And these two are the Anderson brothers. 
Odin and Tor. They had a... How should I put this? A heavy metal band in the 70s and 80s called Old Gods of Asgard. <laughs> they even adopted new first names to complete the image of Viking gods. After the band broke up, they lived on a farm nearby. They are, well, in advanced stages of dementia. They're well cared for, TLC and all that. There's nothing more that can be done. I'm afraid that the rock and roll lifestyle has left its mark. Oh, that won't do. I'm so sorry to cut this short. For now, Alan, the power has been acting up. I'd better go check on it. We'll continue this soon. Meanwhile, when you feel up to it, return to your room and try to write. It really is for the best. Don't you think? I'd like to bash his head in with a hammer. Oh, he'd love to fish out our secrets, but he has no clue. He's not crazy enough. <laughs> not crazy like us, Sonny. Yeah! Being ah. crazy is a requirement, Sonny. Who else could understand the world when it's like this? It takes crazy to know crazy. That's the sanest thing I've heard in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Zane! You're all right, Tom. Hey, we like him, don't we, bro? He's got to go to the farm. The Anderson Farm. Valhalla! We wrote it all down, lest we forget. A crash course. All you need to know to get your head right. You need to find the message. Here, Sonny, here's something for you. Gave me a rash, but I kept it safe from these bastards. My head was clearing up, or according to Hartman, I was sinking back into the fantasy. I was convinced he was lying to me about everything. Crazy or not, the Andersons made more sense. Tom, you got any booze on you? Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> Sorry, we have guys. a stash of the special stuff at the farm. <laughs> but these guys are mad funny. Formula, local ingredients, medicine <laughs> clears your head right up. Makes you remember like <clears throat> moonbeams on the brain. Oh, I just noticed leather patches on the elbows. That's not very rock and roll. Tom just lost his all. Baba, Baba Yaga. Yaga got to him too, the damn witch. She used us all, taken from all of us. Took my thunder, the witch. And my ravens, what was, what were they? Memory and thought, the hag. She took something from you too, didn't she? That's what she does. Um, we're better off. This place, the lake, it gives you power. If you're a creator, an artist, hot gall. Nightmare shifted in their sleep in the darkness of the lake. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. She makes sure it comes out twisted and wrong. Just ask the lamp lady. She knows what happened to that other rider. She's been using you, boy. And you let her. You went and opened the door for her, didn't you? Now, Thanks. now, it was already open a crack. And whose fault is that? We're morally corrupt, disease-ridden, old and stupid. Doesn't mean he had to open it all the way, goddammit. Ah, uh, <laughs> What the fuck is going on? Oh, there's a TV in there. You already know we gotta go watch one of those weird ass shows. I don't even know where my room is, brother. Into this couch. I don't want to disappear. 
My nightmare is the publisher people who want to make a contribution so they can say they made a contribution. And then we end up with mullets in there because they think mullets are funny. But it wasn't supposed to be about mullets. And now it's about mullets. And when it's in slow motion, they call it mullet time because the numbers came back from marketing that mullet time is the hook we needed to go big in the target demographic. And they're not even kidding. They say it all like serial killers with straight faces and smiles. My nightmare is the writers who want to make everything from the characters to the toaster talk, talk, talk all the time and express their feelings so they won't shut up. And the writers won't shut up either because they have feelings too. And I have to listen to them because they're not scared. Look at this guy's neck. Everyone should just shut up. Shut up. Shut up. But I don't see nightmares pairs anymore because I'm too scary for them. I take two pills every morning and one with every meal and four when I go to bed. And that makes me the scariest nightmare of all. What, I have to kill this guy? I don't know what that guy's going on about. Hey, Wake, why don't you humor Dr. Hartman and give the writing a shot, huh? Typewriter's in your room. You can get to your room by those stairs, Wake. Okay, that's where I was heading. Thanks. I don't really want to write anymore. Oh, what the? Something's wrong. I'm not myself. It's hard to think that there's a shadow inside my head. I can only focus on writing. Everything else is a blur. I'm trapped in this cabin. Have been for days, but it's always dark outside. My editor is real. I saw her again. She's not human. It's not human. A dark presence is wearing the old woman's face. She was covered in clinging shadows. There's a hole in her chest where her heart should be. I think I've made a horrible mistake. I don't think I'm any closer to saving Alice. It's been lying to me, using me to get the story it wants, and the story will come true. Uh, that was too spoopy. Five me team. Um. <laughs> Oh, we already know nighttime is coming and we're about to hit this, this shit storm. So, uh, we already know. Let's just, uh. The white glare of the blank page in front of me hurt my eyes. My hands began to shake uncontrollably. Hey, Wake, you stay here. I'm gonna go see what's up. You just keep doing what you're doing. Be cool, okay? I didn't know what the chaos was all about, but it could be my only chance of getting out of here. Where the hell did he get a damn hammer? I don't know. Here's a friendly poke from the old near wench. Oh, afraid of the crazy brothers, are ya? Not so weak now. Are we? Well, things are unraveling fast, aren't they? <laughs> Sinclair looked bad. That wasn't a love tap. The crazy old it's fart hit her hard. And if she was I'm one of Hartman's goons, it. she had it coming. I could get the key to the office wing from Sinclair. We're on a comeback tour, baby! Hartman kept talking, giving Barry the grand tour, clearly proud of the place. He went on and on about his hunting trophies, and Barry was impressed. But he was here on business. He raised his voice, cut through the monologue. Hey, Hartman, where's Al? Hartman stopped in mid-sentence, annoyed at the interruption. He nodded at the hulking orderly standing nearby. The man smiled and clapped a practiced hand on Barry's shoulder. Zane could feel the poems taking form shaping things. As he experimented, he imagined he could almost feel the power surging through the keys of the typewriter. It exhilarated him. But there was fear, too. If not for his young assistant, Emil, he would have given it up. But Emil convinced him otherwise. He, too, had a way with words. Guess let's try to get that goddamn key. Hammer's way will have its say rise up in their name! The backstage I had to get to Hartman's job. office. He had taken Save all my destiny. manuscript pages. That's where he'd be keeping them. <laughs> Come out and face the music, Birch! It's time to pay the piper! 
is going on? Maybe you could come out and beat our wrinkled adult <laughs> How the hell do I even get to his office? We were on the road, man. Is it this way? Oh, you're already... Oh, what the hell is that? The markings on the tape said they were recordings Hartman had made at the sessions with his patients. I saw Alice's name on one of them. For a moment, I couldn't breathe right. Bro, these are creepy, but they're kind of fire. Right? Hartman wasn't happy. Mott could see it in his eyes. He quickly lowered his own. He had made a mess of it, and he knew it. The shame of failure was hard to bear. He hadn't expected Wake to say he needed more time, and he blurted out two days, less than Wake had asked for to show him who was in charge. But that wasn't part of Hartman's plan. <clears throat> Alright. This one looks crazy. That one looks just... Oh, oh boy. Now, Mrs. Wake, can you tell me about Alan's problems? <sighs> You? No, not with me. No, never. I... Sometimes I almost wish Alan would take a swing at me. Because at least that'd lead to a conversation he couldn't just march out of. But no. He just... Alan doesn't really sleep. And the work? Well, he's not writing. At all. He sits there for hours and just gets more and more frustrated. Yes. Tell me, Mrs. Wake. What would you say to him if he'd listen? I don't know. I want to say, I look at you, and it's not you. Just some stranger who resembles you. Looking out from behind your eyes. And I don't like that guy much. And now it's all gonna go to hell. But you don't ever say this. No. No. I've tried, but... If you can just get him here, I'll absolutely do my very best. Yeah, but doctor, you need to be careful with him. He's not just going to listen to you and cooperate. He's the most stubborn man I've ever met. Well, I'll be sure to bear that in mind. Hearing her voice, what she was saying made me happy and sick and guilty all at once. Worst of all, I recognized the words. The phone call from her. It had been a cut-up of this. Just a recording. Yikes. <laughs> okay. Ooh, what's this? The photo on the wall caught my attention. In it, the clinic staff was standing outside the lodge. I knew the man next to Hartman. He was the kidnapper. Oh, yeah. Hartman had been playing me all along. Let me out of here! Hartman, do you hear me? I'm gonna sue your crazy quack ass to flesh! Who's in here? Do you have any idea how much trouble you're in? I am famous. I represent... Barry? Oh. Ow! About time! Barry, man, I'm glad to see you. We need to get to Hartman's office. It's right next door. You okay? Yeah. I mean, no! The cops found me at Rose's trailer, but they didn't hassle me too much. I'm obviously a victim in this, and I demanded to be treated as such. Or else, I'd sue their asses. Speaking of asses, that fed gave me a real hard time. But I had no clue where you were. That guy's crazy, Al. But he let me go, and then I get a call from Hartman, that son of a bitch, who tells me you're here, and I should come pick you up. But when I got here, two goons clobbered me and stuck me in there. What's... what's with the cutout? I stole it from the diner to piss off Rose after what she did to us. That'll teach her. Yeah, that's a harsh punishment. Come on, pal, we gotta get going. My boy keeps getting trapped for real. 
What's his name? Barry? These were all the pages I had on me. And more. Alan, please. You're sliding back Shh, into the... Tell me one more lie and I'll shoot you in the face. Ah, well, it was worth a shot. Really, Wake, come on. Let's work together on this. You have no idea... Harvey, what... shut up! Barry, get out of here. I'll catch up with you. Get a car. Oh, Al, let's just... Go! Wake, listen to me. This is a mistake. Don't you see? Together we can create something absolutely wonderful with your ability and mine. Team, here we go. Here we fucking go. I had to find a way out. The dark presence is here. Oh, please. Oh my god, look at that. Oh, brother. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Where are the two homies? To the two homies. Oh, fuck. I needed light to get the possessed bookshelves out of my way. Need light? Where am I supposed to get light from? Oh, right. I remember now. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Isn't there a door here? Let's go, let's go. I'm to the two homies up. Oh, brother. Oh, my God. Of course, this was not going to be easy. Oh, flare. I used it too early. I used it too early. It's over. Oh, yeah. I thought they just gave me another one. <laughs> Time to watch TV while we get while we die. Springs? Come on, Linda. Relax. It's not that bad. Hey, what's that up ahead? Oh, God. There's someone in the road. I think there's been an accident. Are you all right? Oh, no, Linda. Oh, no. It was me on the road. I... Wait. Tell him to watch out for the trunk. Watch out for the drug! My... 
My God, Mark? So glad to be leaving this place. What, Night Springs? Come on, Linda, relax. I'm not that bad. Hey, what's that up ahead? Oh, God, there's someone in the road. I think there's been an accident. Are you all right? Oh, no, Linda! Oh, no, it was me on the road. I, wait, tell him to watch out for the truck. Watch out for the drug! My... my god, Mark! And there you have it. A vicious cycle, brutally punctuated by the blast of an air horn and screaming metal. Many roads are dangerous, but none more so than the one that leads away from Night Springs. tricks, smoke and mirrors. But for some, magic is more than that. It's a way of working the secret machinery of reality itself. And more than one member of that eldritch brotherhood can be found in Night Springs. Tonight's episode, What's in a Name? We find an old man standing on an old, rusting, derelict bridge, leaning his bony frame against the cold steel. And though he looks idle, he is hard at work. His young apprentice attends to him, as good apprentices do. Yes, yes. Coming along nicely. Don't you think, boy? Yes, Magus. Sir, we've been getting some complaints. Are you defacing the bridge? Oh. No, I wouldn't do that. Sir, I can see the screwdriver in your hand and the scratches on the steel beams. You've been spotted doing this all over town. Yes. I have been very busy, but I'm no vandal, officer. Exactly. What are you up to, sir? He's writing his name on the town. The youngster is correct. I'm writing my name. My whole name, the entire and complete description of my soul, on the town. I'm almost done. Yeah? Well, all I see is an old man tagging public property. Oh, I should bow down to the wisdom of your years? Words have power, young man. Names and titles especially. Uh-huh. And, uh, what's your name supposed to be? <laughs> Tell him, boy. Tell him while I finish the carving. Officer, it's... it's... Say my name, boy. Say it. It's Night Springs, officer. But isn't that... I mean, that's the name of the town, isn't it? Yes, it is from now on. Wait, wait where'd he go? Hey, where is he? Oh, officer. You know where he is, and what he is, don't you? I think you should get in your car and drive away, and remember which town you're serving. Your will be done, Magus. Ah, yes. There are too many little towns to count, all of them with some little magic of their own. But some towns have more personality than others, and none more so than Night Springs. First of all, what the fuck did we just watch? Second, that wasn't even an old man. That was just some guy with, like, dyed white hair or something. And third of all, I like how we're just watching TV while, um, this fucking darkness is just after us. Yeah, let's just watch some TV, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be good. It'll, we'll catch up later. Okay, let's go. Oh my god. Gonna back through this door. Horse. Open the door, please. Let me go, let me go. Oh my god, I almost died. Ow, ow! I'm here! 
Help me, brother. Okay. Ooh, I don't know what the fuck was happening in here. What happened to the two homies, though? They... Yeah, bro, let me... I gotta pick up my coffee, my boy. Chill. What happened to Thor and Odin? It's over here, though. Oh, nice. Oh, we got a gun. Oh, wait, did I always have this? Yeah, I think I always had this. Okay. Oh, oh my fuck. I didn't mean to do that. I found the car, but the gate's locked. You're gonna have to go through the hedge maze over there. Barry, I don't have a light. Take this, Al. Thank you. Oh, God! Look at the house, Al! Look out! looks kind of insane. Let me through. <laughs> oh. We gotta go through the goddamn hedge maids, bro. Who thought this was a good idea? <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Who thought this was a good idea? Don't trust Meal? Who's a meal? Who's a meal team? There's another manuscript right here. Oh boy, team. Oh boy. I'm scared. I don't have any more bullets. Oof. Who was talking? Nothing over here, okay. Okay, I got out of there. Got my health back. I am in desperate need of bullets. Over ammo, thank you. I gotta go over there, I think. You get two barrels in the morning. Oh, that's the crazy guy. Oh no, that's the... That is the, um... 
That is the staff member guy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my god, bro. I hate these fucking crows so goddamn much. You dead. Killed that guy, but where the hell do I go? Oh my god, I'm gonna die. Look at that, bro. Manuscript right there. <sighs> nope. Okay. I am in need of a bunch of things. Barry, where are you, brother? Nice, a shotgun. Oh, bless me. Barry? Wild out, brother. Ha! Ooh! -hoo. Wow. Oh my god, I'm I'm out of bullets. This is gonna be some BS. Flare, nice. They're here. What is this? A manuscript page. Hartman followed the fall of Alan Wake with his binoculars. When the rider hit the water, he ordered Jack to take the boat to him. The spot was easy to see in the dark, even with all the extra lights in the boat. The flare floated and kept burning even in the water. Jack turned the radio louder as the engine sputtered. The music was rough and clanking something the Anderson brothers would no doubt have enjoyed. But Hartman chose to ignore it. Wake was finally within his reach. I stared at the Viking paraphernalia that littered the area, surrounding an unlikely centerpiece. A full-side stage complete with an impressive sound system with all the trimmings, including a dragon. It took a special kind of crazy to build something like this in a remote field. When the sky split open with a deafening boom and the music started blasting, it felt strangely appropriate. For the moment, Barry was just glad he had survived the fall. He had been separated from Al, and there was no easy way to climb back up. He told himself he'd be okay, okay in the gloomy forest at night. He would just have to wait for a while for Al to find his way down. Barry turned when he heard the heavy footsteps and saw the movement. The man-shaped shadow lunged at him from the bushes, an axe held high. Barry screamed and threw up his hand. The world exploded. Mott knew that Wake was smarter than him. 
Wake had more money, a beautiful wife, everything. And Hartman said Wake was important. That made him better than Mott. But Mott was calling the shots now. He'd expected Wake to whimper and grovel, but instead, he seemed willing to fight. Mott knew he'd gotten under Wake's skin. If only Mott actually had his wife. The thought made him shiver. Hartman hurried down the corridor. He had disliked leaving Wake when he was surely at his most susceptible to therapy. But this was not an ordinary storm. Wake had been riding, and he had woken something up in the depths of the lake. Now, it was coming for him. Hartman had naturally prepared for a situation like this. The idiot brothers would keep Wake distracted while Hartman double-checked everything, just to be sure. Alright team, I don't know how we're gonna do this. We have like no... Emil made Tom do it. Okay. <sighs> I'm gonna need more bullets, fam. Barry, where art thou, brother? Oh my god. Motherfucker, you thought. He fell down the, the mountain. There's a box for me over there. Woo! It's a good thing because uh, I really desperately need supplies. Nice. Nice. <laughs> I need more bullets though. So not nice. I was about to say, where the hell are the stairs? Oh man, there's more crows. <sighs> like... I didn't even see these here. Something big is coming up. They're giving us too much. Manuscript. Hartman watched as Wake's features slackened. The man was bullheaded, no doubt. Even lying on the bed, he'd almost broken Hartman's nose the second time. But with a little time, he could break Wake down, give him proper direction. Wake was easily the most promising subject he'd had. Well, since Tom, really. Sleep well, Alan, Hartman whispered with a smile. Let me take care of you. He sniffed hard to clear his throbbing nose, swallowed blood, and barely tasted it. Yikes. Oh, there's Barry. Barry, my boy! I'm coming! <sighs> All those goddamn crows up there. I don't trust it. They're about to attack us, watch. Ow! You're alive! Let's get out of here. Can you open this gate? Maybe. Barry. Uh, well, I slammed it shut when the nasty showed up, and the key fits kind of loose in the lock, so, uh... Barry! I'll find it! Don't worry about it! Ha-ha! <laughs> okay. Ah.
on, Barry. Damn, bro. For the nearest, you're now leaving Bright Falls. Come back soon, sign. We're going to the Anderson farm. I knew you were gonna say something like that. You know what? You owe me big time for this. When this is through, if we make it, I don't care what anybody says, I'm done with darkness. You're gonna buy me a tanning bed as a gift, and I'm gonna live in it. 